All right, let's begin with our top focus story. Now, right from the start, we've been told that India is a land where cultural diversity reigns supreme and the many languages are the colorful feathers in our illustrious hat. And I'd like to use a popular aphorism here that depicts India's linguistic diversity very well. Kos kos par badle pani, char kos par vani. And I'd like to translate it for my viewers. The language spoken in India changes every few kilometers, just like the taste of water. But tonight, we will discuss how multilingualism in India has become a problem now and how netas and abhinetas are starting the language war every now and then. Today, a Tamil Nadu minister stoked a massive row with his remark while weighing in on the official language debate, the Tamil Nadu education minister, Pon Modi, said, and I quote him here, if the argument that learning Hindi could open more employment opportunities was true, then why are those speaking the language selling Pani Puri here? Unquote. That is what he said. The minister equalized a Hindi speaker to a Pani Puri seller. However, he's also now climbed down from his earlier stance, saying that he had no intention of hurting the sentiments of Hindi speakers. Now, this incident has come after the Tamil Nadu chief minister, M.K. Stalin, in fact, wrote to Prime Minister Narendra Modi over usage of Tamil language in the High Court. In fact, a few days ago, Bollywood actor Ajay Devgan and Southern star Kicha Sudeep too had a Twitter spat over the Hindi language. Earlier as well, Home Minister Amit Shah had battered for Hindi language, which drew a flack from Oscar-winning musician A.R. Rahman, also actor Prakash Raj, and several others. Anna has told our Udhavan Jonah, Pona Borda, or Vaid, and the Pona Borda Vaidi, Yana Ramabal Sundana, Hindi Putsha Varakarigan, Kadiga, Hindi Namura Point to the department, Pan Guru Vichiran, Yanda Kalaya, Elamba, Ahadu Urka, Ipa, Angel of International Language, Pona Borda, or Vaid. So those are the comments that uh, we were just playing out to you and this has come from the Tamil Nadu Education Minister. Remember, I quote here, Education Minister Pon Mudi, who goes ahead and says that is if the argument that learning Hindi could open more employment opportunities was true, then why are those speaking the language selling Pani Puri here? Now, the minister goes ahead, equates people who sell Pani Puris, who have no better job to do, probably, they are the ones who only end up speaking Hindi in the state of Tamil Nadu. That was his jibe. And he, remember, probably was at a convocation where he ended up making these states, statements using that very podium, which is probably there to address uh, uh, people who are uh, the students there and also educators in the state. He goes ahead and makes this statement, goes ahead, disses a language in order to actually put Tamil as the supreme language. That's probably his... Uh, uh, way of actually addressing this entire language debate. But what is it that the people really think of this language war? What we've decided to do on the broadcast today is not really throw these questions to any politician or actor or netas, abhinetas, like I just mentioned. I have decided to throw it to my colleagues on ground. They will tell us what are the people, especially in the southern states of the country, what do the people really feel about this Hindi imposition and also this language war that continues to make a comeback every now and then. I have my colleagues who are joining me on the broadcast. Uh, Deepak is joining me from Bengaluru. Vivek joins me from Kerala. Dharani is joining me from Chennai. Now, Deepak, I'll come to you first. You know, we had these comments that uh, had come in earlier today. This is by a Tamil Nadu education minister using a podium to actually go ahead and diss the Hindi language. You know, earlier, 
Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M K Stalin also wrote to the Prime Minister and also the Chief Justice of India, talking about uh, letting and allowing the use of Tamil as a court language, as an official language. He ended up quoting various other states like Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, for that matter, where Hindi is the official language. So why not Tamil in Tamil Nadu? When I talk about the sense that you get on ground when we talk about a state like, for example, Karnataka. What is it that people people really feel about this Hindi imposition that's become so rampant in the country? Well, language is something that people in Karnataka very strongly feel about. Now, let, there are two aspects to it. One is, of course, how the people feel, how they have reacted in the past, and the second part, of course, is how the issue of language has been used politically. Now, coming to the first point, language in itself has been very important to Karnataka, who've taken great pride. Uh, in the scripture uh, and of course the language that is spoken you know a variety of issues of course over the past several years have come up where the language debate has been you know uh, spoken of uh, if you take a look at you know when the metro constructions happened in uh, bengaluru in itself and then of course the boards of most of the metro stations had just hindi and english you saw a lot of protests that took place you saw blackening of boards at that point in time by kannada activists Protests that took place, and finally, you know, uh, they, it was restored to having, you know, a trilingual policy, even in the metros, where you would have the metro stations' a name in, you know, English, in Canada, and even in Hindi. That was one of the issues that we saw. We, of course, see the ongoing issue of the language war in the northern belt in Karnataka, where you know some of the Marathis say that you know the certain uh, area that is a part of Karnataka belongs to them because a lot of Marathis speak uh, the language there. There as well, the issue, of course, is is quite hot, and you you see that sparking off uh, time and again. We, of course, like you were mentioning, the recent uh, you know uh, uh, the incident between Ajay Devgan and Sudeep once again showed you how important language is to even cine stars and how how much pride they take in it. Now, this coming to the second bit of how important it is even for politicians. Politicians, in in one way or the other, some of them, of course, have truly defended uh, the language and truly believe that there is an issue as far as Hindi imposition, and some of them have also been opportunists who use the language debate for their own political gains. In Karnataka, of course, the language debate has been ongoing, mm. the, uh, and, and you know, politicians and you know, activists alike have taken it to different levels. But at the end of the day, the issue still remains that yes, India does not have a single language policy. In the southern states, more often than not, we have even from uh, you know the education that starts off from a very young level. There's a tri-language policy that's followed, where you know students are of course educated in English. There is a second language and there is a third language. So, question that many experts ask is why is such a policy not followed in the north, where there's just two languages that's taught, that's Hindi and English. So, even the option of learning another third language, which could be any language in the country, is not given there. So, at least. Here, while people are being accommodated, why is Hindi being imposed uh, in the southern states? Is a question that time and again comes up. Vivek, what happens when the, uh, uh, in fact, Deepak, what happens when the tables are turned? Like, uh, you know, you have just come back from Varanasi, a dominant Hindi-speaking belt of North India. When a South Indian goes to North India, you, of course, are reporting there. What is the status there? You know, that Hindi dominance that we talk about, are people, uh, you know, there on ground really very, very uh, accepting of a non-Hindi speaker? Well, it's, it's simple, isn't it? Now, when I go to any part of northern India, if I speak, you know, Kannada, which is widely spoken in Karnataka, or any language for that matter spoken in the southern states, nobody would even understand the language. Now, when many people from any part of the country come to the southern states and speak Hindi, more often than not, you would have, you know, the people of locally understand the language or at least able to respond because, like I mentioned, from the schooling days or in the college days, there is, of course, a policy of, uh, you know, the trilingual policy that's followed where students at least have the basic know-how of Hindi and it is taught so they are able to comprehend it. But the question is, just because you can understand the language and you're able, if you were taught the language and your understanding of it, does it mean that it has to be imposed on a particular, uh, you know, set of people in, in a particular state? These are questions that come up when there is no, no attempt whatsoever to learn the language, uh, you know, uh, uh, by uh, uh, another set of people in the country. So should there be a language okay. that is followed across the country? Absolutely. Should that be English? Another debate that really comes up.
Absolutely, Deepak. Thank you so much. In fact, I'd leave you there because you've just returned from Varanasi. We'd let you have your rest and uh, then we'll come back to you tomorrow with more inputs. Uh, Vivek, I'll come to you now. What is the situation really like in Kerala? Because uh, like we had that offline conversation, you told me that there are many Hindi speakers in the state of Kerala. So is that debate of Hindi imposition really there? Uh, in Kerala, as you compare with uh, Tamil Nadu, you know the neighboring state. Uh, if you if you look at the imposition of Hindi, uh, as I said, that you know that imposition is not that much happening as far as uh, Kerala is concerned, especially when you compare it to Tamil Nadu, which has a history of you know this uh, Dravidian uh, movement, which happened in the 60s, where uh, you know the debate between the Hindi and Tamil language was much uh, spoken about. But here in Kerala. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, in the cultural space uh, or in, in cinematic spaces, that uh, this particular debate has not raged much. But off late, after Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan and M.K. Stalin had shared the stage in Kanur in the 22nd party conference, uh, there was some kind of dis discussions about this particular issue. <laughs> and even uh, Chief Minister uh, uh, M.K. Stalin has also mentioned about this issue in his speech, uh, in his, you know, 30-minute speech where he said that, uh, you know, there is this Hindi imposition uh, in South mm. India. But uh, as far as uh, politically speaking, if you look at uh, various political parties whom I spoke to, especially with the CPM and the Congress, the two dominant parties, you know, they haven't spoken, uh, they haven't said uh, that in Kerala uh, such an imposition has ever happened. And moreover, Hindi Pracharak Sabha was first formed in Kerala by Mahatma Gandhi uh, in the uh, 40s. And hence, uh, from there, if you look at uh, you know, the Hindi imposition is not much spoken about because a large population, especially the migrant population, uh, you know, uh, in Kerala, uh, are speaking Hindi and, and moreover, Hindi language is accommodative in Kerala. Uh, but off late in the political circles, if you speak to the, uh, you know, uh, people from the, uh, the CPM, uh, they do say that, uh, you know, uh, such imposition uh, of Hindi in South, uh, you know, should not be accepted. And they've been very vocal about it. But in the cultural space and the literary space, if you look at the last few decades, uh, Kerala has been uh, much more accommodative when it comes to Hindi uh, and Hindi language, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, when compared to the neighboring states. Right. Uh, and Dharani, let's come to the state which has become the bone of contention, Rao, the state of Tamil Nadu. It's a minister there, the education minister, who goes, takes to the podium and makes these comments. Now, of course, there has been a clarification. But uh, if you talk about the people in Chennai, you know, how strongly are they affected with this language uh, debate? Tamil Nadu or generally, you know, they have this sense of attach attachment towards the Tamil language. Uh, so even as Vivek rightly pointed out earlier, uh, Tamil Nadu has, you know, witnessed a protest against Hindi imposition in the, you know, as early as 1960s itself, led by Dravidian leaders. So that sense of emotional attachment towards the Tamil language has always uh, been there with the people of Tamil Nadu. And that's one of the primary reasons why uh, political leaders of, you know, uh, of either of the uh, major Dravidian parties and also other parties, they've been uh, consistently, you know, uh, they, they'll talk about uh, the sense of attachment uh, uh, the Tamil language has with the people of Tamil Nadu, and they, you know, uh, whenever there's an uh, uh, allegation, or whenever there's an attempt to, you know, impose Hindi, or whenever they feel there's an attempt to uh, impose Hindi language into the state of Tamil Nadu, uh, they, you know, automatically release uh, statements and uh, comments uh, about the same. Even as you rightly pointed out. A couple of days before Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin, he wrote a letter to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and uh, Chief Justice in, of India, uh, you know, N.V. Ramana, asking you know, them to uh, declare Tamil as one of the official languages along with English in the Madras High Court and uh, Madurai bench of the Madras High Court. And even one week earlier, we saw a protest in Jibmer when, you know, when the college administration issued a, uh, you know, issued a circular telling that you know, all the college communications and circulars will also be uh, published in uh, Hindi along with uh, English. So whenever there's a debate about about uh, you know Hindi being introduced or uh, you know being allegedly imposed uh, into the state of Tamil Nadu, there's always been protests, irrespective of which political party is in power. So as far as the people of Tamil Nadu are concerned, uh, they naturally have the sense of attachment uh, towards the Tamil language and. Uh, you know, the, the stand of Tamil Nadu people so far has been is that, you know, they're okay with learning other languages, uh, but, uh, you know, they, 
Uh, they are not okay with the language being imposed in fact uh, even today uh, mm. higher education minister ponmudi while he was uh, talking at the uh, you know bharatiya uh, university convocation at coimbatore he told that the people of tamil nadu are ready to uh, learn other languages but they not but they not okay with any language being imposed mm. so that's one important statement that was uh, told by minister ponmudi right. and apart from that as we know uh, he also told that uh, but you know, of course darani anything that is imposed or impressed upon someone will actually be facing resistance which is what what is happening with the hindi imposition when it comes to tamil nadu or other southern states in fact uh, we were talking about that clarification that has come in uh, by the tamil nadu education minister ponmudi just take a look at that i think it is profiling people who are selling pani puri over there oh no nothing hindi right. speaking people no, no, are no, not like that not like that they are doing here they are doing most of them they are doing working on the pani puri with shops and all those things opposition party is something asking you apology for you know making such they a remark they are saying uh, your remarks <laughs> they are asking for apology how do you okay. Do you think it is right to profile people sir, based on their job and language? Do you think it is right to profile their people based on their job and language? How do you see that your speech has gone this controversial, especially given that you made a statement regarding the power? Somebody might have been, they might have done it. Not, uh, I don't have any purpose. Okay. Without any purpose, I suppose. Most of the people are not getting a job even in the north. Let us say, mentioned it. Sir, was your intention to insult Hindi speakers? No, definitely not. Pani puri selling is not an uh, insulting manner. Insulting manner. Okay. This is they are doing here as that work. Huh. They did not get government job and all the seats are here. That is what I mean. What were you trying to tell the governor at that point in time? That, what were you trying to say the not governor? Not the governor. Okay. No matter. the people those who are speaking that we if you learn hindi we can go and get employment there in the north but what i mentioned is in the north itself there is no uh, uh, employment Will you that take is what you come sir many yeah. hindi yeah. Yeah. many hindi speakers yeah. yeah. feel yeah. yeah. insulted many yeah. hindi yeah. speakers yeah. feel insulted yeah. Yeah. what do you want an apology yeah. how do you see this sir All right, uh, a climb down from climb climb down. In fact, from his earlier stance, uh, we have to wait and watch. How does he plan to justify the comments? Now we pose the same question of what happened on uh, you know the that comment by the Tamil Nadu Education Minister to Kerala Governor Ar Arif Muhammad Khan. However, he refrained from weighing in on the language row, which was reignited by the Tamil Nadu Education Minister today. But the governor did, however, speak about the Malappuram incident, where a Muslim scholar was purportedly seen shiding one of the organizers for calling a class tenth girl student on the dais to receive an award. Now, he in fact condemned the incident and called it intolerable. Let's listen in to this exclusive conversation with Arif Muhammad Khan. it is reprehensible what was done to that girl her only crime was that she is a talented girl she has she has passed her examination with merit but she happens to have been born in a muslim family right so on that account she is being barred from coming to the stage in a society like kerala where i can say with great satisfaction that people are very conscious and sensitive about gender equality now tamil nadu minister has said that the hindi speaking people the hindi speaking people are I, I, you don't expect me to comment on the, uh, the minister of i state okay. where i am not there. All right let's lay 